Wanjiru recital of a family's futile search for Ishmael, Ishmael Karanja, which took them from police stations to hospitals to morgues, visibly moved me and brought all of us present to a halt. Because she actually said, stop it. Ishmael Karanja and many others are missing and unaccounted for because they were peacefully protesting against the Ruto regime's atrocities. Our children are laying in the mortuary because Inspector General of Police, Japheth Kome, and his Lieutenant Bungay, both Ruto appointees, executed a shoot to kill order. Kome and his subordinates ruthlessly and blinkingly ended their young lives because they dared use their constitutionally guaranteed right to peace, peaceable assembly, demonstration, and picketing under Article 37 of our Constitution 2010. This is the state of the nation today with grandparents seeking their missing children at police stations. This is a state of the nation where sisters and brothers receive calls informing them that their siblings are in hospital beds after receiving life-saving care. This is a state of the nation in which fathers and mothers have been forced to identify the remains of their sons and their daughters. This morning, far too many households and villages are either in mourning or in a heightened state of anxiety. The heartbreaking pleadings of our mothers, fathers, and sisters seeking the status of their loved ones are rippling the air from Rongai to Nairobi, from Machakos to Doret, from Garissa and Mombasa, and all areas of our country. Our children's phones have been switched off. Their social media accounts have been erased to hide Ruto and commerce crimes. We stated a few days ago, as a Zmeo Lamoja and Kenya Coalition Party, that June 25th would go down in the history of our country as a day of infamy. We were mistaken. This Ruto led regime is the greatest infamy wrought on Kenyans in their 61-year-old independent history. And if it wasn't obvious before, it is now even clearer. Ruto must go home now. Yesterday, and through the executive office of the president, a quote-unquote youth engagement forum for inclusive development missive was publicly issued, signed by the chief of staff and head of the public service, Felix Koski. There was an announcement, quote, that a multi-sectoral forum will be constituted to engage with all stakeholders in addressing the concerns raised by the youth a communication was long in acronyms and short in apology for the state sanctioned shoot to kill order that led to the massacre of hundreds of our children's future. According to all reports, the leaderless and tribalist Generation Z has disregarded with more than contempt this embarrassing, inept, embarrassingly inept sanitization effort. They have rejected this dictatorship. They demand answers today about where their comrades are being detained. They are demanding answers today about where the bodies of the slain heroes have been concealed. They want nothing to do with Ruto. Indeed, as of last midnight, I think last night, Gen C had raised in excess of 28 million shillings. And they are so transparent about it. They know where to send it, which hospital. 
an example in open governance and fidelity to accountability. To our tribeless and leaderless Generation Z, who have braved the streets to preserve and defend the Republic from Ruto, know that I have the deepest administration, admiration, I beg your pardon, and respect for you. Your tipping point may prove to be Kenya's saving grace, securing the next generation and generations to come. To our fallen Gen Z martyrs, you will not be forgotten. The stain of your blood covers our national flag. Both Kenya, the region, Africa and the world have witnessed over the last two weeks is a citizenry uprising. One that will not be quelled by just from a person they detest. As a wiper democratic movement, we will set an example by taking disciplinary action against our members of parliament who voted, voted in favor of the repugnant anti-people finance bill 2024. We will remove them from their leadership positions in both the party and in parliament. We urge other Kenyan people-centric parliamentary parties to follow suit and recall all those representatives in the legislature and the executive who have failed you time and time again. I'm aware that while the National Assembly and the Senate recently finished processing the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission Amendment Bill 2024, Ruto has yet to assent to this very important legislation. The Kenya Kwisha dictatorship, and I now pronounce on Kitui, Kenya Haitaisha. They may want to finish, but it will not. Mm. This dictatorship has purposely obstructed not just the recall of anti-people MPs, but also the staging of a snap election as a result of the 204 plus recalls. This is a higher subversion for the Kenya people as well. And I think it's important to let the country know mm. that the recall clause takes effect after August, exactly two years. Then the signatures that get collected Right, become meaningful. And I think the Gen Z are on that already, onto that. Recall. Recall of the 204 MPs who voted against the conscience of the Kenyan nation. I have faith that Kenyans led by Gen Z will march through the rock strewn trail and climb over this boulder. And in a similar peaceful manner as they did to protest the punitive finance bill 2024 and ensure that this crucial bill is enacted in the coming weeks. Of course it's been enacted, but signed into law. The one thing William Ruto should do is to sign it expeditiously, and because it was one of the products of the National Dialogue Committee, whose report now is just staring are the principles unable to do anything or unwilling deliberately to do anything? But this is critical because a country with a, without an independent electoral boundaries commission cannot carry out the next important election. I want to say that after desecration of parliament, the blood spilling on parliament road a young man whom I found at City Mortuary with his brains blown off by a sniper from a top of parliament. I want to urge parliamentarians, do you sincerely feel you should go and sit in that august house at a time like this? Or is indeed the best thing for you to do? Parliament can perhaps even dissolve itself 
I'm asking on Speaker Wetangula to dissolve Parliament, himself resign as a measure of solidarity with the Kenyan people. Perhaps he will save his legacy if he does so. So that this country then can go for a snap election. And so that we are our men will go back to the barracks, our men in uniform. Are we still <laughs> a democracy <coughs> or a dictatorship for real? I saw what uh, Duale tried to do, amend what the court had ruled, the court of first instance, that they needed to define the scope of engagement of the military. And then he brought in the 47 counties, for goodness sake. Are we just supposed to just sit and say nothing when we militarize this country? But I thank our military. I saw an NG escorting them, clapping for them. Because their mandate is not to shoot and kill Kenyans. Their mandate is, is to kill Kenyan enemies across our common borders. And they know their mandate very well. This country obviously misses General Gola. I don't think Ogola would have allowed this to happen. And I want to urge Karanja, the new CDF, to stand strong and stand with the Kenyan people, recognize their mandate. This is a serious matter that the country is going through. The country is watching. We are pained. This is not what some of us have stood for. Even when we are demonstrating, I nearly got killed myself a year ago when that tear gas canister went through the rear screen, landed uh, between the driver, the quadra, and, and, and exploded. I still keep that tear gas canister for the record of my grandchildren to know what it means to fight for your country. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I call on Kenyan leaders to listen. If you don't listen to Gen Z, <laughs> then I don't know who else you can listen to. And to attempt to divide them by inviting their leaders. They have said no. As we speak, I don't know who they are. <laughs> but they are Kenyans in their hundreds of thousands. You can't call that. So leaders, take note. I think after this Gen C effort, any leader wanting to seek, seeking elected post anywhere from MCA to MP to count women rep, madam, we are not in that category, to senator, to member parliament, president. and you go, eh? who, are, who are the others? To president. President. <laughs> <laughs> to president. Yes. You, you go out there saying, unless you have billions of shillings, you stand no chance or getting elected, mm. Kenyans are now watching and say, you, unless it is a calling for you. And I think leadership is a calling, just like those men and women mm. uh, who are served to serve the Lord uh, from their respective areas. Mm -hmm. Kenyans, the Gen Z are saying, unless you are called to serve, don't bring your corrupted money mm. to bribe us. Mm -hmm. We know you. Mm -hmm. So I really feel that this Gen Z have liberated our country from corruption. The issue is corruption. Mm. Corruption, they are saying no to, and they know exactly who is corrupt and where. I think some of them are doing Google Direct <laughs> and find out where are your accounts <laughs> and what are you doing. So I think we all notice. Anataka Nikamilishi, Apple. 